folks, Nick Culbertson here, and today we're starting a brand spanking new game development project. And guess what? You're coming along with me. That's right, from the design and prototyping all the way to releasing and marketing the game, you're gonna see every step along the way. I will make two promises. One, I will try to keep this entertaining throughout, and number two, we will have a finished game at the end of this. So, let's get started. The first thing we have to do is come up with a game idea. Are you my game idea? Are you my game idea? Is this my game idea? Are you my game ideas? No, in reality, when a developer sits down, chances are they've already had an idea nagging at them for a long, long time. Make me. Sorry, I'm working on other projects. Make me. I can't. I got live stuff. Make me. Okay. <laughs> but don't take my word for it. I don't have a clip to cut to. The game we're creating is going to be a hyper-casual rhythm game. The last three games I made were either rhythm games or had rhythm as a component. And I just love music! What can I say? One unique thing about me is I like music. And the reason we're making it hyper-casual is so that anyone can play it. And it's easy to make! I also want the game to have insane audio visualization. <laughs> It's not going to be like that, but it is going to be something where the gameplay is going to go along with the music that's happening. You can think like, uh, <laughs> I don't know, have you ever played a rhythm game before? <laughs> have you? Have you? I'm asking, have you ever played a rhythm game before? Because if you're not going to make a game that just packs a punch, it's not worth even making a game in the first place, because it's just going to blend in with the crowd. But we want to punch people in the face with this game, but we also want to punch them in the heart. And for this game, we're gonna go crazy. Like, here's crazy, and we're gonna go like totally insane. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta remember not to be too loud because the microphone's gonna start clipping. Check. Check one, two. So, here's the breakdown of the series. First, today, we are covering the design for the game. Then, in the next episode, we will be doing our prototyping, followed in the next episode by the game development beginning. Then, in the next video, we will be doing the art, <laughs> followed in the next video by the music. <laughs> then finally we will round out the series with releasing the game and marketing it. Oh man, it's been a long road getting here. Oh, we haven't released, we're not done yet. We haven't started yet. If you do want to follow the development and you do want to follow the development, be sure to follow on Twitter, YouTube, or Discord, or just drop by my house and I'll tell you what I've been working on. Let the work commence. First up is our game design document. A game design document is basically a big outline for your game, talking about everything that's gonna go into it. And we're gonna create our game design document together, right now. If I'm honest, typically I don't like making a game design document. I prefer just jumping into prototyping, but I think this will get us all on the same page of what we're building, and it'll force me to be disciplined and talk about what it is that I wanna create before just jumping into the code. Let's get started, again. So first up is the title of our game, drum roll. Blast Beats. A blast beat is one of those things that drummers and hardcore songs are just like di -di 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 -di, when you're hitting the kick drum and the snare and the hi-hat all at the same time. <laughs> Next is the description of our game, and this will change once we get to the marketing, but for now it's just so we know what we're working with. Blast Beats is a hyper-casual rhythm game with insane audio visualization. It'll also be single touch and have that retro game pixel art aesthetic. <sighs> it's gonna be awesome. We don't need to add that. Tools. The tools we will be using to make this are Unity, Photoshop, and GarageBand. Unity is a game development engine that I've created previous games on, and the reason I'm using it for this project is because I've already gone up that learning curve with Unity, and also I have created assets for my other projects, problems that I will not have to solve again, because I've already solved them. Things like how to do animations, how to do in-app purchases, and ads, and play music, you know, that kind of stuff. Photoshop is an art program. I use several programs to create pixel art, but that's the one that I always come back to because I use Photoshop for everything else. You could probably do your taxes in Photoshop. Next is GarageBand. If you're a Mac user, you probably have GarageBand already on your computer. It is a free recording program, has great MIDI capabilities, and all the music I make, I use creating GarageBand. Monetization, which is a fancy word for where to money at. Well, this game is going to be free, free? 
The best things in life are free, so the song says, but we, meaning me, <laughs> are gonna make money from interstitial ads, in-app purchases to remove those interstitial ads, and indirectly through cross-promotion of our other apps and games. Okay, I'm keeping some of these next ones very general, but the screens for our game will include a start screen, level select, game screen, and a credit screen. And additionally, we'll have little pop-up screens of if you win, lose, uh, for a menu, tutorial, story, stuff like that. And when I say screen, I mean it's all gonna be on the same screen, the same scene, but we'll just be popping up different view containers that hold a lot of different elements to them. So your start screen, might have like a logo and a start button and a credit button and a menu button, but we'll go over that in a minute. Is our game gonna have multiplayer? No. Leaderboards? No. Achievements? No. That's not the kind of game we're making. We're making, remember the tiny game? It's a tiny game. Held together by bubblegum and a prayer and copying and pasting code from the internet. That's the kind of indie game we're making. But actually there will be one achievement. If you beat the game 100% complete, then send me a picture of it over on Twitter and I'll send you back this image. <clears throat> What's next? This year, instead of going into isolation for eight months to work on something, I instead wanted to work on little bite-sized pieces of content. I like to think of it like a little micro-cassette. Insert micro-cassette right here. You know what it is. It's like a regular cassette, but it's like the mini version. And that's what this is. It's not a Game Jam game, but it's also not like a jumbo dreams, hopes, aspirations, money, time sort of project. But even though our projects are small, we still want them to have a large impact. It's like a cherry bomb. It's like... One of the most exciting times to be working on a project is both whenever it's in the idea phase and whenever you first start to see that idea come to life. If you're gonna be creating a lot of small projects, then you will be bearing that fruit over and over again, like a fistful of blueberries as opposed to eating just one large blueberry. Hmm. Blueberries. You're much more agile when you're putting a lot of projects out because you can see what is resonating with people and what people are just like, oh, whatever. I've said it in the past that one of the ways I've been successful as a developer has been at throwing a bunch of things at the wall and then seeing what sticks. With tiny projects, because you have more at bats, there's a lot of metaphors going on here. Baseball, pasta. I think throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks, that's like pasta noodles. You know it's done when you throw it at the wall and then it sticks there. You could just taste it, but what's the fun in that? It's really difficult, nay impossible, to know what's going to be successful before you put it out. So one tactic can be to put more out. Will it kill you in the process? Probably. But it does increase your chances of success just based on the probability. Now I'm creating a blueprint for how I want all the different screens to look. This will help us to know how to set up all the elements once we actually jump into Unity and start coding this out. That way you won't have to keep on jumping back and forth with adding elements to each screen if you already know where everything's gonna go. The navigation for our app will start at the start screen, then you can go to a credit screen or a level select screen. From the level select screen, you select a level, and once you have played that level, it will either go to your win screen or your lose screen. This is the general flow of a lot of video games out there, but it'll help us to know visually where all these components will be laid out and how navigation will work from screen to screen. So these are the basic components we're gonna be putting on our different views to help build out our screens. The start screen will have a logo that's scaling. We'll have buttons for start, which goes to our level select, credits, which goes to our credits, and a menu button up in the top corner that will take you to a pop-up menu. Our credit screen will have a big text box with a bunch of credits in it. Spoilers. And we'll also have buttons at the bottom for our dev story, which you are currently watching, a link to review the game or remove ads with in-app purchase, and also a more apps and listen to the soundtrack button. That's right, this soundtrack, we're gonna be putting it up on the Spotify's, up on the internets. You ain't gonna believe it, it's gonna be incredible. You put your music on the computer? Next, we have our level select screen, which includes the title, Level Select. We'll have a scroll view full of 15 buttons for our 15 levels. That's right, our game's gonna have 15 levels. Five of those will be new original songs, five of them will be from Epic Orchestra, and five of them will be from Synthwave Escape. So you're gonna get a whole smorgasbord of music. Hey, y'all need any music down on that end? And lastly of all, we have our game screen. This is where the bulk of the content's gonna go, but basically we're gonna have our background elements that are jostling and gyrating with the music, a timer to let you know how much more time is remaining in the song, some text to say, ready, set, go! 
some type of visual response to correlate with if you've gotten a good or a perfect or a miss. We'll also have a target that the player is trying to get their notes inside of and the notes that will be going to the target. We're gonna have health, we're gonna have a special bar, we're gonna have player unlocked. Whoa, cool down hotshot, one thing at a time. We're also gonna have buttons where the entire screen is a button. It's only gonna be a single touch rhythm game so all the user will have to have is one flesh part to touch the screen. And also a back button which will be persistent throughout the entire game. So our game logic in terms of the code is we want to start an audio file, we'll say ready, set, go! Then we will trigger note prefabs that spawn based on a timestamp within the song. We'll go into more detail with that in upcoming episodes, but basically I'm just saying we are creating notes along with the music. Actions, like I said, the whole screen is just one big button whenever you're playing the game. And whenever you do tap that button during the game, we will check if a note is in the target and then determine if that tap was a perfect, good or miss. If your health equals zero, then we're gonna show a losing screen, but if you make it all the way to the end of a song, we will show a win screen and save your progress. The win and lose screens will be very similar in design. They'll have a little logo that's scaling, and we'll have buttons along the bottom to return to the menu, retry the song, or go to the next song. And that's it for our game design document. That was easy. I don't know why I've been so hesitant in doing these in the past. It's actually kind of fun. You would think that building the game is the actual hard part, but really it's just solving all these early problems that's the hard part. Fleshing out the vision of what you want to create. The brain person has already done all the heavy lifting, and now the lemmings just have to bring it all to life. Oh! The two areas I expect to be most difficult moving forward is one, getting all the art and visualization stuff to look super cool. It might take a lot of content to do that. The brain person has not told me what to do yet. And it'll also take some experimentation. And the other part I could see taking a considerable amount of time is writing and recording the five songs that are gonna go into it. I want them to be like rock guitar anthems. Ooh. Not that kind of anthem, but an anthem, nonetheless. So I can't believe it, but we're actually done designing the game and we're ready to create our project and start jumping into the code. Like a big warm hot tub full of gummy bears. That's what we're gonna do next time. You're not gonna wanna miss it. And before long, you will have this game in your hand on the commode. Some mobile games are best played on the toilet. And that's actually not a joke. It's, kind of, it's a fact. So the design of the game is probably gonna change as we get started building things, but at least we have a foundation, a witch upon to build off of. For whom? When discussing our future game baby, Blast Beats. Blast Beats. Blast Beats. Blast Beats. Blast Beats? Blast Beats. Blast Beats. Blast Beats. Blast Beats. I'm just getting the name in your ear so you remember it. It's also kind of a new name, so you gotta say it a whole bunch so it doesn't sound weird. At first, any name you come up with sounds weird. And also in the internet age, every name is already taken. The other day I was searching for a name for another project and I searched the name Pixel Jacuzzi. What kind of sicko names their company Pixel Jacuzzi? Well, someone did. Uh, forget the fact that I was thinking of using the name too. That's irrelevant. All right, I won't take up no more of your time. You know, I just gibber you. Get me flap, John. I'm just flipper flapping. <laughs> Hey, that's it for this episode. Thank you all so much for watching the video. I hope it's been entertaining. I hope you've learned something. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments anything. If you're watching this video later, then there's a good chance the game is already out or the soundtrack is already out. Check for all these awesome links in the description and I'll see you awesome folks next time. Next time. Today, things are heating up. We're going from designing this game into actually building the game.